Hi, welcome to Inside Church. We're so glad that you are able to join us. We trust that as you watch the message that your heart will be stirred and that faith will be built. Amen. Amen. So if you've got your Bibles with you and you um, just remember, never leave your sword. We put the word up there, but that screen's not with you. So carry your Bible because it's your sword. Or at least have it an electronic sword, like Star Wars. <laughs> okay. This is the natural one. This is that other one, the green light one. <laughs> okay. So, Matthew 95. I mean, <laughs> thank you, Lloyd. <laughs> thank you, Lloyd. Matthew 95. <laughs> How many of you knew those Matthews not, that doesn't have 95 <laughs> chapters? <laughs> Psalm 95. Psalm 95. Verse 9, chapter 95, verse 7. Holy Ghost. <laughs> Jonathan, is that you at the back there against the pillar? It is you. God bless you, brother. I've been thinking a lot about you. Good to see you. I'd like to have a chat to you afterward. Glory to God. Well, welcome with us. Whoops. Enjoy the Holy Ghost. <laughs> For he is our God, and we are the people. Say, we are the people. Of his pasture. Come on. Don't say God's not feeding you. Don't say God's not this. God's not listening to me. We are the people of his pasture. What does pasture do? It feeds you. And the sheep of his hand. Today. So I want to charge you. Today. Because the Bible says. Today. If you hear his voice. As this word is ministered to you today, you will hear his voice. He will break the bread of life as he sees fit for each one of us today. Okay? So the Bible says today, if you hear his voice, do not harden your hearts as in the rebellion. Amen? Disobedience it starts with doubt moves to unbelief, then becomes disobedience, then becomes rebellion. Right? So take that doubt. When you sense that doubt, take it down quickly. Quickly. Do not harden your hearts as in the rebellion, as in the day of trial in the wilderness. Many times when we're in a situation of a trial, we say things like, well, I don't know, you know, I've been praying. I don't know, I've been serving God for years. I don't know why the Lord's not hearing me. Don't do that. Don't do that. As in the day of trial in the wilderness, that's what the Israelites did. When your fathers tested me, they tried me, though they saw my work. They saw God do miracles. Yet, they doubted him. I want to say this morning to you, as important as miracles are, and they are important, miracles will not keep people. The Word of God keeps people. As you and I grow ourselves in the Word of God, we begin to experience personal miracles. Nothing wrong with men in ministry praying for you or a brother standing in agreement with you. Nothing wrong with that. But what you need to get to is where you stand in what God has told you and you experience miracles for your own good. Okay? For 40 years I was grieved with that generation and said, it is a people who always go astray in their hearts. 
and they do not know my ways. One of the questions I was asked while I was in America a few times was what is discipleship? I'm talking about believers. Now I'm saying that in a critical way. I'm not meaning that in a critical way. I'm saying that they don't know what discipleship is. Yet the instruction from the Lord Jesus Christ was make disciples. Therefore, if he said make disciples, he should and can and will teach us what discipleship is about. Now, in part, what we are doing here this morning is discipleship. Now, just so you know, going forward, we're actually going to start going more like we take pillars of truth and we do pillars of truth for new foundation uh, as people come into the church for new foundations. We're going to uh, drill down into those subjects and that would be an extension of discipleship. Got it? Okay. So for 40 years I was grieved with that generation and said it's a people who go astray in their hearts. Okay. It doesn't start in your heart, it starts in your head with a thought. I don't know. You think this is God? That's where it starts. Okay? And then it drops down into your heart. And then we begin to reason. And then we wonder, is this God? Well, as soon as we do that, we're starting to not know His way. See, the more time we spend meditating on the value systems of God and the truths of God, the more we will know His ways. If something happens in my life, I immediately, I may not have the final answer, but I immediately know this is not God, this is not how He works. Now, I may not have the steps, but I know not to go there. Do you understand? Because I know the ways of the Lord sufficiently, don't know it all, but sufficiently to be able to walk carefully in the ways of the Lord. And when, when one says that, don't, don't get like a sour puss. It doesn't mean you have to get unhappy. Uh, be all holy and walk with the Lord. Who gave you laughter? Who gave jokes? Not crude ones. Humor. Who gave humor? God. It's also part of him. So what the devil does is he takes away all the joy from the church. And then they don't know why they go to church. Amen? Because when they go to church, they've got to put on their sour puss look. Right? Right? If you know God's way, you can have great fun. In the Lord. Unperverted. Not crude. Come on. So I swore in my wrath, they shall not enter my rest. So I swore in my wrath. God was angry with them because they had seen many miracles, yet doubted. So that's what I want you to understand this morning. The title of the message is Transition Requires Obedience. Transition requires obedience. Transition doesn't just happen. Transition, if you want it in more common vernacular, means change. Change doesn't just happen. I've been serving God for over 40 years, and He keeps growing the vision, which means I have to keep changing to align with His purpose, His way, of doing things. COVID hit us. Nobody had seen that disease. Well, if those that knew about it kept it quiet. Hello. Hello. But you know, God had it covered. I said, God had it covered. I said, God had it covered. Come on. God had it covered. So, when we go through transition, it's a lifetime. Please say, Lifetime. 
It's not five minutes. If you've got a short goal, that'll be short. But if you're going to walk with God in the image of Christ-likeness, then the transition is going to be a lifetime experience. And what it's going to require is incremental steps of obedience in faith toward God's Word. Psalm 37, let's go there. Psalm 37. I love it as my granddaughter competes with my preach. I think she's preaching. Amen. I speak it over her. She's going to be a preacher. Come on. Psalm 37, and I take those agreements. So don't be surprised, mother and father, when she wants to preach the gospel. We had it sealed today. <laughs> Psalm 37, verse 23. The steps of a good man are ordered by the Lord, and he delights in his way. Not sometimes, every day. I said not sometimes, every day. Now you don't have to pray to find out what shirt or shoes you should wear. You should have enough mental capacity to think that one through, right? But there are many areas of life where the transition is trying to come through and we're not allowing it. But if we allow the steps of a good man, now a good man is not that you're not holy enough. That good man is there is no good but God. No one, Jesus said. So what we're talking about here is the righteousness of God in us. So we can lay hold of this. The steps of a good man are ordered of the Lord. That word ordered is established. When they poured the concrete next door here, they didn't just start building. They had to wait for the concrete to set, to become established before they can go to the next phase. There are many phases in our lives. But God needs the phase, the current phase, to be established before he can build the next phase. And so sometimes we're in a hurry and say, I don't have time for this. You know, as many of you may know, I raised in my age with the Lord in regard to the planting of Inside Church in Charleston with the Lord. One time too many. And it wasn't many times. And this is what he said to me when I was talking to him about the transition. For those of you who don't know it, but it bears repeat. Because some of you are looking a bit gray like me. And don't you dare sit on a rocking chair. As long as you've got a mouth, you can change the world. As long as you've got a heart that aligns with your mouth, you can change the world. A man's belly shall be satisfied with the fruit of his mouth, and with the increase of his heart shall he be filled. Death and life are in the power of the tongue, and they that love it shall eat the fruit thereof. The Bible doesn't lie. So I said to the Lord, let me remind you, Father, and I told him what my age was. Back then it was 65. And I heard the voice of the Lord in that time with, when I was with the Lord. And I heard him almost in a firmness. Well, it was a firmness. And he said this to me, do not raise your age with me again. Consider my servant Abraham. Now, don't go home and have lunch and say, he called himself Abraham. <laughs> I didn't say that. Amen? Amen? It was Mrs. Watson's not cooperating with that thing of Abraham, <laughs> I can assure you. <laughs> Steps require acts of obedience in faith. 
moving toward an end result in God's Word. If the Spirit of God begins to quicken to you, believe me for healing. Will you continue to walk out that truth in steps of obedience? If the Lord says to you, I'm the God of restoration, I can restore your family to you, will you walk in the steps of obedience as the Holy Ghost guides you in those steps to the end until it becomes manifested because it will. Amen? Can I get an amen? amen? So the steps of a good man are ordered of the Lord. Understand this, and this is sometimes obscure in believers' lives. God is looking after His Word, not yours. Therefore, you and I align ourselves with His spoken word. Are you with me? Because in His word is the well-being of all and every human being if they will take the salvation of the Lord Jesus Christ into their lives. So what He's doing is looking after His word. And because when we get born again, we are born into sin, you do know that, right? We spend many years going through life in a natural context and don't understand that it's going to require change in our lives because change is uncomfortable. Are you with me? So what it does is affirm the works of Christ. So transition is not about us, but it's all about us. It's like a paradox. But it's actually about God bringing the glory of His Son into the earth. Hello. Hello. And that's why we need to walk. So Christ's works are not exclusive to Jesus. Now don't think I'm speaking heresy. Jesus said, the works that I do, you will do also. And greater works than these will you do because I go to my Father. So when we, in this transition, as we embrace the works of Christ, and that includes spiritual, mental, social, physical, financial, every facet of life, it's going to require change. So there are things that I'm going to have to do that I don't want to do. I love being in Africa and not always traveling. Traveling is not fun for me. I do it because I have to do it. I know people get excited. My kids often ask me, so you're excited now because you're leaving? I say, no. You know, when I start thinking about the change, it's when I'm leaving South Africa. Then I start thinking about what I've got to do there. Do you understand? Because I want to be in the moment where the Lord is. So Christ's works are not exclusive, but inclusive. I want us to go to a scripture, because as we allow our participation to be inclusive of God's plan and purpose in the earth, something takes place. Go to with me to Hebrews. Hebrews, 11, uh, Hebrews 10 Verse 35, I want to give you scripture because we'll see that the Father begins to delight. He has pleasure in obedience. Now, that does not, if you are in disobedience, it doesn't mean God doesn't love you. Do you understand that? 
He just isn't getting the pleasure. How many of us are parents? And our kids would play up. It didn't mean, well, I'm cutting off my love forever now. That's it. No. We had no pleasure in their disobedience. But it didn't stop us loving them as our children. We can't stop that love. And so is your Father in heaven. He doesn't have some love and then turn it off. He is love. That's who he is. Okay. So let's go to uh, Hebrews 10, verse 35 to 39. Therefore, do not cast away your confidence. And I wish we had time to just spend more time on this particular scripture, which has great reward. Do not cast away your confidence, which has great reward. For you have need of endurance, so that after you have done the will of God, not your will, after you have done the will of God, well, I don't know what the will of God is, the Word of God. In here is business strategies, marriage strategies, children raising strategies. In these scriptures, as you read them, God will open things to you for your personal life. For you have need of endurance, so that after you have done the will of God, you may receive the promise. What's he saying? It's not going to come with the first squawk from ourselves. Well, God, I've been waiting. That's not going to move him. It's not going to change his love, but it's not going to move him. For yet a little while, and he who is coming will come and will not tarry. Verse 38. Now the just shall live by faith. But if anyone draws back, in other words, refuses to go through the transition. See, faith is a verb. It's a doing word. So if you're going to hang around God, things are constantly going to be working. Constantly. 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 You know, quite an interesting thing. Once we decided, once we decided to plant Sozo Logistics in Charleston as well, suddenly... Customers are saying, have you got an office in America? Because they've heard. And now God's bringing the business to the office. Why? Because obedience brings blessing. I said obedience, not sacrifice. I'm so sorry, Lord. Yes, you should repent. But you can't live there. You've got to live in obedience. It doesn't mean you're not going to make mistakes, but be quick to repent so that you keep the purposes of God working in your life. Now the just shall live by faith. But if anyone draws back, doubt, unbelief. Doubt, unbelief. Doubt, unbelief. That's how we draw back. My soul has no pleasure in him. I had no guarantee that those people would pitch for that meeting. But I had to do it. I said, whether there's my wife and I and my daughter, then that's it. Then we'll do that. But we're going to do what God said. Amen? It's a lot bigger than when we started the plant in Durban. There were four of us. And our children. Sorry, six of us. Because the Krebus came. The man and woman that pl- stand up, Clinton and Yvette. They came from Joburg. The Lord told them, give up everything and go and help this ministry. He's still here. How long now, brother? 1995. Amen. How much? 27 years. Amen. Come on. Amen. And he still got the endurance to listen to me preach. (laughs) (laughs) Now the just shall live by faith. But if anyone draws back, my soul 
has no pleasure in him. But we are not of those who draw back. Can I get an amen? amen. To perdition. But of those who believe to the saving of the soul. That word perdition is destruction. When we draw back, God can't work. When we move into doubt and unbelief, we open a door to the devil. God hasn't stopped loving us, but God's waiting for us to take authority. Right? In faith. To stop the works of the evil one, because that's what the Bible says we can do. So Abraham grew in faith while God was speaking to him. But it became his responsibility to act in obedience to God's words. Now let me remind you, and this may sound very dramatic, but it is that important. Your life of obedience could change the life of a lost person. That's how important it is. If Abraham never listened to God, there would have been no salvation in the earth. That's how serious it is. You see, if he hadn't offered his son, because I haven't got time to go into all the legal aspects, because God works according to truth and righteousness and justice. He doesn't say, I'm God, shut up, devil. Because the devil can point at him and say, no, you can't change the word. Because then you better forgive me. So you need to understand that about your father. He walks in absolute integrity. What he says is what he does. But he requires us to believe him to birth it into the fullness. So because Abraham gave his son, God reciprocated. Remember when Abraham was put to sleep and, and, and the sacrifice, etc. And so he grew in faith until he got to a place where he could offer up his son. And the Bible says that his faith was such that he knew that the promise rested in Isaac. Therefore, if he, if he did get Isaac to die, he would resurrect him. That's where he got to in God. Nothing was too big. Nothing. Are you with me? Now, he's the father of our faith, and that's what we need to see. So how many men and women's salvation is tied to your life? The only mandate you were given, go into all the world and preach the gospel. And the gospel was to teach them and disciple them in the ways of God. So, now for this truth to become a reality, I must finish, because Lloyd wants to play his video. <laughs> for this truth to become a reality, understand the importance of instant obedience. Instant. Instant. Now, I understand you're going to learn because your mind always wants to engage on the wrong side. Because when we look at things, we look at through our last reference point in our subconscious. And the renewing of your mind is not your emotions. It's actually your subconscious mind that's being renewed. Okay, Because when you see a situation, if you don't renew your mind, what's going to happen is you're going to respond in the old man. And so God wants our minds renewed to his ways, so we respond in a God way, not an old man way. Are you with me? So people do business, principles of the world, and then come to church and wonder why their business isn't working. Probably. Are you with me? Because we don't do business by the world. We do business by the Spirit. What does that mean? That's for another day. Come on, family. 
So a great deal of people, because they don't be, respond in instant obedience, they begin to vacillate. A double-minded man is unstable. Period. Make the decision. If it's wrong, repent. But at least God knows you tried. And He will in time teach you so you don't make those mistakes. Peter said, but me come, Lord. Well, he went and then had second thoughts about where he was. The Lord didn't condemn him. The Lord took him back to a safe place. He's never going to hurt us for stepping out in faith. Come on. You understand? It's so important that we understand this. Because we don't want to live a life of excuses. You know, I would have had a car, but I grew up in a bad house. I didn't go to university. I didn't do this. I didn't do that. I didn't. Forget that garbage. They real things. Yes, but in Christ, life changes. The old becomes new. And if it's not becoming new, you should allow it to become new. Every area of your life. So, these are excuses. Tradition, culture. Convenience over obedience. Lack of commitment. I'm going to pray every day. So we start out two hours. I'm pray for two hours. We get to 10 minutes. Or maybe we make an hour. And then the next day, 55 minutes. And then the next day, 40 minutes. And then, and then I'm just too tired. Don't do that. Start small. Rather pray for 10 minutes and keep the commitment. Because that's what God will honor. Are you with me? And the, it, I'm going to say this. It might terrify you. Jesus did say, could you not pray for one hour? That's where he started. But as, a, as, an, as, a, as, a, as an unsaved man, I came into the kingdom and I prayed for between two and three minutes. How do I know? Because I watched my watch. I never prayed in my life. So I watched. How long am I praying for? And I phoned Janet. We just started dating. I said, I prayed for three minutes today. And she asked me the question, how do you know? I said, because I was looking at my watch. And that was it. I ran out of stuff. Three minutes. But God took it. It was a seed. It was a seed. He said, I'll take it. Because my ability in you will take it. You with me? So, just, yeah. Let me close. The old life is an old wineskin. Fuff. Now we're going to Matthew. See, I wanted to check you earlier. <laughs> Matthew 95. <laughs> I knew I was close in the spirit because it was Matthew 9. I just added a 5. And I want you to see here as we close. Matthew 9, verse 10 to 17. We're talking about Transition requires obedience. Transition requires obedience. Now I've got the wrong scripture after all that. <laughs> ah, there it is. Thank you, Lord. No, I did get it right. Sorry, I didn't. I, I, oh, did I want to read that much, Lord? Yeah. Okay, that's why. Oof, that's a long read. Okay, but we'll do it God's way. Verse 10. Now it happened, as Jesus sat, behold, many tax collectors and sinners came down, came and sat down with them and his disciples. And when the Pharisees saw it, they said to his disciples, why does your teacher eat with tax collectors and sinners? <laughs> when Jesus heard that, he said to them, Those who are well have no need of a physician, but those who are sick. But go and learn what this means. 
I desire mercy and not sacrifice. For I did not come to call the righteous, but sinners to repentance. Then the disciples of John came and said, Why do we and the Pharisees fast often, but your disciples do not fast? There is nothing wrong with fasting, okay? Just understand the context of what the Lord, what is the Lord's unpacking here. Transition requires obedience. And Jesus said to them, Can the friends of the bridegroom mourn as long as the bridegroom is with them? But the days will come when the bridegroom will be taken away from them, and then they will fast. No one, you're going to need this for transition, no one puts a piece of unshrunk cloth on an old garment, for the patch pulls away from the garment, and the tear is made worse. Nor do they put new wine into old wineskins, unless there is change, unless you agree to change, truth can't change you. Do you understand this? Now, truth will bring you to a place of change, but the ultimate change requires your agreement. And that's where the old has to be put down and the new has to be taken. The new wine is a type of revelation. It's a type of truth. It's a type of the ways of God. Into the old wineskins or else the wineskins break and the wine is spilled out and the wineskins are ruined. But they put new wine into new wineskins and both are preserved. We're out of time, but write down the scripture and go and look at it. 1 John 2 verse 20. For you have an unction from the Holy Ghost. Right? He has made a mandate in his word for every believer that is born again of the Spirit of God to go through a place of transformation. You cannot be the same as you were at the beginning of the year. Something is wrong. I'm not talking about you going to heaven. I'm talking about us as effective believers in the truth of the Lord Jesus Christ. God bless you. In your name. Amen. We're going to take up the offering very quick. I've got one, oh, my one minute's gone already. Sorry, guys, we're taking a little bit of your time. I'll be, I'll be one minute. I want to read three scriptures again. It says in Psalm 33 verse 4, it says, The word of the Lord is upright, and all his work is done in faithfulness. Deuteronomy 7 verse 9 says, Know therefore that the Lord your God, he is God, the faithful God, who keeps covenant and loving kindness to a thousand generations. And so these scriptures and there's many others in the Bible tell us that God is faithful. But then there's one more scripture I want to read, and it's how we respond to his faithfulness. And it says this, Trust in the Lord with all your heart. Lean not on your own understanding. Acknowledge Him in all your ways, and He will direct your paths. And so we can trust Him because He's trustworthy. We can trust Him because He's faithful. The Bible says, God is not a man that He should lie. And so as He moves your heart, I know you could be sitting here this morning, or maybe you've just been sitting with God over the week, and He says He's put a certain amount in your heart that you want to put into the offering, or maybe he's challenging you, um, he's speaking to you about the tithe, you can trust him because he's faithful. You know, he's, he will never do anything to hurt us. He, he always, everything he always asks us to do is for our own benefit, even when we don't see it or we don't understand it. And so he is faithful this morning as you respond to him, as you're obedient to his voice, as you're obedient to his, vo- to his word, know that you can trust him and that he is faithful. Amen. Thank you for watching. Join us again next week to stay in touch with all that God is doing at Inside Church.